everyone. I'm here in church, and I just wanted to give a little uh, talk about our second window here on the right side. So the main depiction from the story of Christ is the Sermon on the Mount. Okay, so Matthew chapter 5 uh, and 6 and 7 are the three chapters of Jesus' teaching the Sermon on the Mount. He goes on the mountain, sits down, his disciples gather around him, and he teaches them, okay? Representing the new Moses. So this uh, well, represents the teaching ministry of Jesus. His words were a very, very important part of who he was as the Word of God made flesh. Okay? And the new Moses, who on Mount Sinai received the law. So now um, he uh, interprets the law and brings it to fulfillment, which is what we have mentioned here in this bottom panel. So, of course, the Ten Commandments, the, the two tablets of stone where God's commandments were written. And then here, come not to abolish but to fulfill are the words of Christ that relate to that very importantly. Above it is one of the first parts of the Sermon on the Mount, the first of the Beatitudes. We know the Beatitudes, blessed are the poor in spirit, etc, etc. So we have that outlined there. <clears throat> now, um, also alluded to here, we have the loaves and fishes. Because on the mountains also Jesus did many miracles of feeding uh, people with multiplying the loaves and fishes. Okay, so we have that depicted there too, uh, alluded to, but it's not from the Sermon on the Mount, it's a different part of the Gospel. Okay, the two scenes that we have for here, St. Elizabeth Ann Seton, this is her teaching, you know, so she was a teacher in two ways, right? She taught children in schools, but also as a um, foundress of a religious community, she taught other religious sisters. So, um, we weren't able to do both of them at the same time. So we just had her as a school teacher, uh, as best as we could. And then on the right is the last thing that Jesus mentions in the Sermon on the Mount. He talks about those who hear my words and act on them is like a person who builds his house on a rock. But those who hear my words and don't act them on them it's like someone who builds their house on sand. So we have those two depicted. The one that's collapsing under the sand and the storms, the person is just in misery over um, the sorrow of it. Right? So it's a reminder for us to found our life on the teaching of Christ if we want to build on rock. A very beautiful passage. Actually, I've uh, had some couples choose that for one of their wedding readings, which is for me very very beautiful because I think it's a great uh, uh, way to start your marriage to say we want Christ to be the center of this marriage. Okay, so that's the window that uh, we have here. There's a few other little symbols around, um, and one day I will go through more thoroughly and explain those to, uh, to everyone. But this is the basics of it, and I hope you uh, appreciate it. The last one to come in, maybe in a month or perhaps a little more than that, would be the wedding at Cana. So both sides of the, of the sanctuary <clears throat> of our church would go progressively, starting sort of in the back at the early part of Jesus' ministry, and then progressing towards um, the crucifixion scene at the front, right? So we have at the end here, the Last Supper, and then over on the other side, the Agony in the Garden. So it's a timeline that goes from the back towards the front uh, and center where our Lord, uh, his crucifixion is, uh, is at the center of all. Okay? So, thank you for joining me on this little journey today. God bless you.